If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. I have a couple of videos where I go into setting up my latest development environment, which includes using Sail with Docker and all that stuff with Laravel. A very popular question that I've gotten is, how are you interacting with GitHub from your Sail and Docker environment? That's basically what we're going to be covering today. What I've done is I have created a new project. I have whipped it up with XAMPP, that whole XAMPP environment. And then what I did is I created the Docker dash compose.yaml running the sale command to install it in a project. And then I pushed it up to GitHub and this is where we are now. And as you can see right now it's private, but by the time this video goes live, it will be set to public so that you guys can try it out and practice with this one if you don't want to build your own. The other thing I've done is I have turned off the XAMPP environment and as you can see here, or I still have the database for that project, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop it. So now there's no information about that in my project. I can go ahead and close this because we're not going to be needing it anymore. What I typically use is GitHub Desktop. You see, I have no open projects here. These are all things that are currently in my GitHub account. As you can see, there's no open project here. Everything has been deleted from here. There are some things that I won't be going over in this course, such as setting up an environment for sale. I have already done that. You can go and watch those videos and get an idea of how to do that. You're also going to need to be able to have some information regarding development environments and development environments with Laravel. You will also need to be able to interact with your GitHub repo. So whether you have SSH included in it or you're doing HTTPS, something that will allow you to interact with your own repos. For me, I have SSH set up for my account. So that's what I will be using to interact with my repo. What I want to do is I want to go to code and then under here, I will use the SSH. And as I said, you can use HTTPS or GitHub CLI, however you've set this up, just However you clone a repo, just go ahead and do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to open up a terminal. And this terminal is actually the one that I have set up with sale. As you can see, there are no current projects in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do git clone. I'll press enter and then it'll clone into the account. And as you can see in my folder now, we have that new GitHub repo. So I'll CD into that. And because it's already a repo, of course, it has main, that is the main repository that it is on. So what we can do now is ls so we can see what is going on within this project. And it looks like we have everything. The only thing that we don't have is the .env file and, of course, some things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up in my text editor and I'm going to use VS Code for this. You can set up Sublime, however you interact with your projects. So as you can see here, we have pretty much everything that we need. The most important thing that we have here is the Docker Compose. And this is what will allow us to clone this repo into our sale environment. Now, before we do anything, something to note is that we do not have a node module. So we don't have any of our package.json files in our project yet. And we also don't have the vendor folder for our composer.json. The only thing that I've done with this project other than adding that Docker Compose is I have also seeded 100 users into our database just so that we can make sure that we are also interacting with our database. That's something that we're going to need to do once we set this up as well. So we're going to open up our terminal. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a new environment file for us since we only have the example one. So what I do is I'm going to copy the .env .example to the .env. This way we can just adjust it according to our needs. As you can see, app name, we'll need to get the app key, but we can't do that without Composer installed yet. And we have a database with root, but we're going to make this sale and password because that's what we'll be getting from sale. And that's pretty much it for right now. So I'm going to go ahead, open this up. And then I want to head into the Laravel documents that will show us the command that we need to run this. In the documentation, if you go to Laravel sale, and this is listed within our packages all the way down towards the bottom where the yeses are, and you continue scrolling down the page, it shows you everything about installing and setting up, doing everything on a current project. 
But what we want to do is we want to go down to where it says installing composer dependencies for existing applications. Now, what all of this is essentially saying is that if we're doing like we did now, we clone someone's repo, but we don't have all their dependencies and we don't have all their NPM packages, then we can't just add composer to this project. Right. What we need to do is this Docker run dash dash RM. This is a whole thing. All we need to do is copy this in. And we're going to paste it in our terminal. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead, paste it in there, press enter. OK, and as you can see, it is now going through the process of what it's like when we create our own project and we start getting it ready for Docker. So I'm just going to let this run. So as you can see, it has installed everything. We have our vendor folder here. These are all the packages that have been included within that install or within our composer.json. But again, we don't have the NPM here. Before we go ahead and install those NPM packages, we can just go ahead and do sail up. And I'm going to put it detached so that when it's done, we'll know it's done. Now our project is up and running in Docker. So I'm just going to clear this. The next thing that we want to do is to create an app key for our .env file, because if you remember, we do not have the app key. So we can do sale artisan key generate. Let's take a look. Now we have one. So the other thing that we can do is install our package JSON file. So I'm going to go ahead and do sale npm install and let that run. Now that we have that up and running, the last thing that I want to do is I want to set up the migration so that we can seed our database with our users. And for that, we can do sale artisan migrate seed. So now we have another error. This is a MySQL error. And what it's saying is that something's wrong with how we set up our connection. And that's absolutely fine. What that means is everything in our .env file, our DB connection is MySQL, but our DB host is also MySQL when it comes to sales. So we'll go ahead, add that here. We'll try to run it again and see what happens. So now our migrations have been set. We should have a database with a bunch of our users. If you've been watching anything that I've been doing with sale, I stopped using Beekeeper Studio. And the only reason I stopped using that is because I cannot save my databases. I can't back them up. I can't export them and move them around. So I had to switch out of that because I save all of the projects that we do. I typically back up and store and save somewhere. So I've moved away for that at this time. But what I have been using in its place is MySQL Workbench, and I used to use this ages ago when I used to use Homestead a lot. This is actually, for me, a much better database. It does way more than Beekeeper Studio does, and again, it is free, but here I can back up the databases, so that's why I'm using this. Basically, if you are using MySQL, all you want to do is to press this plus button so that you can create a new connection, and this one, I'm going to call it what's in our this thing. And I'm going to go ahead, paste it here, because that will be the name of the database. And host name, all this stuff looks good. We'll just change this to sale. And then for the password, we'll add password, because that's what we have going on in our project. So now we can just click test connection. Everything is all good. So I'll just close that. And then we'll go ahead and open it. As you can see, our database is here. We have our tables, we have everything that we need. And if you click that, we should get all of our 100 users. Just move this up so you can see a bit better. But as you can see, we have all of our users here. Great. So we have a database. We've pulled in everything from our project now. So let's go and try to make some changes in this project and push it back up to that repo. Let's go to the welcome blade. How about we just get rid of the styles from this? 
get rid of all of this and we'll just say hi from our sale clone. Now you're wondering, how can we push this up? Well, as I said, you do need to have some kind of connection to it. I have SSH keys involving any of the repos that I have in my GitHub account. In the terminal, we'll just do git status so we can see what we have. Okay, so we've modified the package lock.json as well as the welcome blade. So here we can do git add or git add all. And then we can do git commit for the message updated the welcome blade. So we have committed the changes. Now we should just be able to do git push origin. Okay, looks good. Let's go and check the repo. Hey, look at that designated coder updated the welcome dot blade. Everything has been changed. Fantastic. Now let's say we didn't want to push up to this specific repo. We wanted to create our own because we cloned it so that we can work on it and maybe create something entirely new with the basis for this project, right? So let's head back to the text editor and work that out. In here we can do ls la so that we can see exactly what's in here. So we have this git folder here. This is from the clone that we did. So all of that git information is in this folder right here. And all we need to do is remove it. So as you can see, we have nothing left in here. Typically, I prefer to use GitHub Desktop for everything so that I don't have to remember all those commands. If you've never used it, give it a shot. It makes my life a lot easier when it comes to pushing, pulling, figuring out which files I want to put where. You can do a bunch of stuff with it. It's very flexible. So I'm just going to show you how I would create a brand new repo with GitHub Desktop. All of my credentials are in there. Everything should be good to go. I just want to create a new one on the hard drive. Let me grab the name. Is this here? I'm going to use that as the repository name. Now, this I would have to change out of this XAMP stuff. And what I would do is this WSL, and this would actually be WSL dollar sign. This is just a directory where all of my repos are on my system. 2204, since that's what I am using. And then it is in the home directory. Nico for me. And then the folder that I have it in is codes. So let's go ahead, create the repository. And we're probably going to get some errors. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. But it looks like it has created the repo for us. If you're getting a bunch of errors, just make sure that your credentials are set correctly on your system as well as GitHub. So look at that. We have a brand new GitHub repo with all of our commits. And if we take a look at the project, we now have main back and we can go ahead and make another change. We'll say hi from our own GitHub repo. Let's commit that in GitHub desktop and try to push it up. Updated welcome from our new repo. Okay, then we'll go ahead, commit to main. So it's just like a brand new repository. Well, it is a brand new repository. So we want to publish it. Now I already have this exact same name. So I'm just going to do from and add a description. For now, I'll keep it private. But by the time you guys are seeing this video, I will go ahead and also add that. Go ahead, publish it. So it looks like it's gone through. Let's check our GitHub account and see if we have it. Go ahead, open it. Okay, looking good. The change that we made was in the resources folder. And the welcome blade. Fantastic, we have it from our own GitHub repo. Now, this is me from the future, and I realize I didn't actually show you the site that we just did. So let's do sale up D. And let's go ahead and go to localhost. And as you can see, we have our own GitHub repo. Now you've seen it. If you're enjoying the content, please go ahead and click that like button as it really does help out the channel. Here's a video YouTube thinks you'll like. 
and here's a playlist to follow along. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.